Right guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. In this one I'm just going to be showing you how to swap out your Shimano Ultegra R8070 flat mount caliper for the new R8170 caliper. So let's go ahead, let's run through the steps. Right, one, two, three. So here we have the current caliper, this is the Shimano Ultegra R8070 caliper obviously flat mount caliper and then what we're going to be doing is exchanging this out for the new Ultegra this is the R8170 caliper so first thing we do we get that wheel removed out of the way just for a bit more uh, room to work and then we go ahead and get this uh, caliper off the bike so the next thing we need to do is undo the hose there from the caliper so that's an eight millimeter spanner for that also what you want to do is on the floor just put a, a tray on the on the floor there so catch any fluid that drips out of that hose after it's been removed so we we'll just get that undone first just wind it all the way out we'll see the fluid to start coming out as you as you undo it as you can see that's what I said put a put a tray down below just to catch any fluid that's going to come out of it and just pull it up out like that and move over to one side like that and just let it drip down into your tray below and we can get the caliper undone from the fork. So because this is on the fork, we've got a, uh, a clip there, safety clip to stop one of the bolts coming undone. You can see plastic clip over the bolt. So you need to remove that off of there first. Obviously if it's on the rear, it'd be, you wouldn't have that. So once you've undone that, off of there you can just crack undone your bolts. Now holding it to the uh, fork, so that's 4mm hex for these. So just wind those out. One at a time. Get them undone. That's the caliper removed from the fork with the mounting bracket so we have the two calipers see the old one there and the new one so they both use the same pads as they've always used before so the new one uses the same pads as the old the differences are, see the, the newer one now has a hex head to hold the pads in which is a better idea so that's a 3mm hex there instead of the flat blade screwdriver slot they used to use and then the bleed in on these ones the hose goes, there's just a plastic rubber cover over the bleed point there where the hose attaches to and there's another one there where you put your 3mm hex to open and shut to do the bleed in there whereas before it used to be obviously open ended spanner on the, the nut there or ring spanner on there and then the bleed point was on the same where the hose went on to was on the same point on the bleed nipple there so that's the changes in it and obviously what they've done now is made it wider so there's more clearance between the pads and your disc so the way it mounts is the same you've got your bracket on there same as you had before except now on this bracket it used to be one way for 160mm and then obviously you turn the bracket round for a 140mm now you've got 160 or 180 on here so 180mm 
disc as well on that on the side written on there and then obviously turn it round it says one for 140 when you swap the bracket over most people would be running a 160 on the front so another difference in them is the bleed block before you used to have to take the pads out there and then this bleed block on the old one the AE70 went up in from underneath then you slid it up there and then put your pin back in the new one looks like that now so that just goes in you take your pads out and that just slots in straight into the top now so here we have the 8070 caliper with the pads and the bracket so that's 142 grams so here we have the 8170 caliper with the bracket and the pads 140 grams for that right so before we go ahead and fit the new caliper on to the bike I'm just going to say that what you should be doing is changing the olive there especially if you don't know and you've never changed it before this one's only just been changed not long ago it's not fully crushed down when you do up the nut here as it's threading it, it's crushing that olive down so if yours has been fully tightened up what'll happen is I'll just show you this on this one just there you can see this one has been fully crushed right up so it's crushed right down so if you was using that again it probably wouldn't seal again so what happen is you do it up then you go to bleed the brakes and there'll be fluid coming out of the center where the hose goes in of the, of the nut fluid will come out of there, it'll leak out of there once you bled them up it'll be leaking or you, or you might see it as soon as you start bleeding it up so really you need to change that olive on there now I'll just I'll just show you the way of changing them without obviously replacing the whole hose you, all you want to do is buy a new olive and put on there so I'll just quickly show you what you do to change that so to remove that olive off there what you got to do is move your nut up out of the way and then what you need to do is with a multi-tool with a cutting disc on it like this then all you do is gently just cut that on the olive just lightly a bit at a time and just cut it down obviously don't cut through the hose just cut it down till you just see the hose on one side and then on the other side just weaken it through on the other side so opposites from each other then once you've done that you put two slots in it then then what you do is get a flat screwdriver and in the slot put the screwdriver in the slot that you've uh, cut and then twist the screwdriver like that and what happens is the olive I'll just show you one anyway what the olive will do is split in two so you can see there it just splits like that then you can and it comes off the hose so you just split a section off of it with the screwdriver like that then open it up and then you can just take that off the hose and put on and slide on a new olive on there without having to try and renew your hose or cut your hose anything like that because you, can, you can't cut it it's got the pin up inside there so if you're cutting it all you're doing is shortening the length of the hose up the top which you don't really want to do so that's one way I just thought I'd explain of how to get that olive off especially if it's crushed right up and you know it's going to leak again so we get a bolt in the top there then we can uh, mount it onto the uh, fork
and get that one nearly done all the way up. We'll just nip it up for now, so you'll see you have to uh, adjust it again when we go ahead and uh, fit the wheel back in and fit the disc in and everything. Make sure it's not uh, touching anything, so we just get the uh, get them started. Another good idea on these bolts is just put a little bit of anti-seize on them as well. Doesn't do any harm. Just put a little bit on there, just so you know they're going to come back out again. Otherwise, if they don't, then your fork's going to be scrap if they're if they're seized in there. So we do that. And also, we just hook the hose back up. So you make sure you. Got the hose all the way down into the bottom and get that started off square so you're not cross threading the, uh, the nut and threads in there. Otherwise, make sure it starts clean because they can be tricky to start off. So we get that started in there and we wind that in. Right, one, two, three. Just get the spanner on there. Nip that down. So now we can uh, obviously, you've got your bleed block you can use in the middle. So you slide the bleed block in from the top, like that, on these, and then put your pin through the center. Or hold your pads in. Just hold it in place. That's a three millimeter hex on these now. It was a flat before screwdriver. That's in place like that. So got the bleed hose attached here. Just take the rubber bung out. Put your hose in. And then the same this side, take the rubber bung out and then you've got a three millimetre hex in there to open and close the bleeder. So if you want to know how I'm bleeding it, all I'll do is I'm just going to put a link up on the top on the screen here. If you click on that, then I'll show you that'll show you the easiest way to bleed them. Literally takes no time at all. So if you watch that video then you'll see how I'm doing it. So I'll just bleed these up and then we'll get back to it. So once you complete the bleed, you can just lock off your three mil hex there, just shut that up, and then remove your hose off of there. So you can put your rubber covers back over. One of them's got a bigger hole in it. One of them's got a small one sticking, small point sticking out. So the larger one goes over the actual bleed nipple there and this one with a smaller hole in it goes over your hex head. So we can go ahead and uh, put the pads in. So just remove that pin again. So you don't have to use a bleed block in here, you can put your pads in with your temporary disc in the middle. So you can put that up through the middle with your pads in if you want to, if you want to, it makes no difference. I say the way I was bleeding it, you're not uh, using the uh, lever to bleed it anyway. So you don't really need this in, you can put your pads in, like I said, with the temporary disc in there. So 
we slot the uh, slot the pads in. And put your pin in. Now, what I recommend is put a bit of anti seize on those threads on there because they can get seized into there if you're not careful, and then you've got a problem undoing them. Gotta do is nip that up. Once you've done that, then you just uh, get your safety clip on the other side and just put that on the on the end of the uh, the pin. Just clip that over there like that, so it can't come out. That's the pads back in, so we can get the wheel refitted with the disc. So we've got the wheel back in now. We haven't tightened up the bolts fully yet. So you, you put your wheel in, then spin it. Now if you hear a rubbing noise, what you want to do is, bolts are loose, so what you want to do is just hold the brake on, so as it's on, so your wheel can't spin. And then, when you hold it on, just nip up your bolts. So once you've nipped them up, like that, and let go of your brake, and spin your wheel. As you can hear, it's not making a noise, not touching anywhere. If it was, then all you do is stop, undo your bolts slightly, spin your wheel again, hold the brake, and then spin your wheel, hold the brake on, and then nip those back up again. Then let go and try it. When you're happy, it's not making any noise. Then you can torque these bolts up here, your mounting bolts, torque them up. Seven newton meters is adequate on those. So once you torque them up, then you've got a clip, looks like that. And that goes over the bolt at the bottom there. Obviously this is for 160, so it's pointing upwards like most would be. So the peg just locates in the hole in this bracket, it just locates in the hole there and then so you open the rest of it up around your bolt like that and then that stops that bolt working its way undone just as a fail safe on there for that clip so there we have it installed the caliper swapped for the R8070 to the 8170. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content. Till next one, ride safe and I'll see you then.